In the last video, we looked at label and one hot encoding as a text representation techniques in NLP. In this video, we're going to look at bag of words technique. Let's say you're doing a um, news classification and here there are some news articles. Let's say you're writing Python script for web scrapping and you are scrapping different news articles and you want to extract company name from these articles so, so that you can do kind of like a document classification. And by reading this article as a human, you know, if I ask you as a human, uh, which company the article is about, you will be able to detect that easily. You'll be able to say, okay, these two articles are Apple and these two are Tesla. Now, how did you do this exactly? When you read an article, you notice some key terms such as Elon Musk, okay, Twitter, he's buying Twitter, Elon Musk, Model 3, Gigafactory. When you encounter all these terms, you know that this is about Tesla. And when you encounter terms like okay, Apple, Tim Cook, iPhone, iPad, you know it is about Apple company. So one way you can auto extract the company name is by building a vocabulary. So the vocabulary may look something like this. And then for each of these articles, you can have a word count. For example, I have some random article. I can put, I can go through the articles, okay, I can, and then I can do a word count. So the word Tesla appeared 14 times in that article. Model 3 appeared nine times. The remaining words were zero and Gigafactory appeared two times. This way, you can just get a simple word count. This is no rocket science. You're just counting the words. You know, this word appeared how many times in the article? And at the top, you have written the entire vocabulary. And by vocabulary, I mean, let's say you have 100 articles. Out of those 100 articles, you will take unique words and you'll probably apply some stemming, lemmatization, and you will create that vocabulary. It could be, let's say, 10,000 words, okay? And if I give you these vectors, right? These numbers, sequence of numbers are nothing but vectors. If I give you these vectors, just by looking at this vector, you will be able to tell me that this article is for Tesla, correct? Because see the word Tesla Model 3 Gigafactory came multiple times. And the other article is for Apple because iPhone, iPad, iTunes, this kind of terms were present. The third one is for Tesla. Again, Musk, Tesla were present. There was a Cook, Tim Cook's reference in the Tesla article as well. It's, it's possible, right? Because they're, it, the, the news articles are talking about competition and such. So it's possible that you will see some references of terms which are not related to te Tesla, but it could be related to some economic conditions, competition and so on, and that's fine. But overall, by getting a frequency of the words, you will be able to tell what company is this. And this is bag of words, basically. For bag of words, this is a bag of words numeric representation. All you do it is you have a vocabulary, you get the word count for each of the words which are present in the document, and you create a vector, and that vector is also called count vectorizer. You know, when we'll use Escalon, we'll, we'll come across this class called count vectorizer. Now, we are doing going to do some coding and in that we'll be tackling a classical spam problem, right? This is, a, this is an image of my, the real Gmail screenshot that I have. And Gmail is very good in terms of detecting spam. Um, I, I got this email and in the email, just by looking at the terms such as, you know, I have $55 million in my bank, for example, urgent business assistance. So just by looking at these, uh, these terms, you can tell that this is a spam. So the model that we are going to build in today's uh, tutorial, we will take an email body, we'll convert that into numbers using bag of words model, and then we'll apply naive base classifier, which is one of the classifiers in uh, SKLearn. There are many classifiers, naive base, random forest, decision tree, and so on. We'll be using naive base. You can you try other ones as well and measure the performance. So 
the abstract approach we are taking here is we have raw text, we are converting it to a number vector and we are doing machine learning on top of that. So again, to go over this approach, uh, when we have all these emails, you know, the middle one is a spam email, the other ones are not spam email. We will be building a vocabulary first. Vocabulary is a unique count of words in all your emails. And that vocabulary looks like this. See, so this covers all the words that you came across in these three emails. And then we will build a bag of word or count vectorizer where we take an email. Okay, this is one email and we put a count. So play came one time, volleyball came one time. I played volleyball for two hours this morning, by the way. And here, for example, playing and play. So playing, if you do stamming, playing will be reduced to play. So you can say play came twice, right? Here and here. So therefore in the play, I have two times. So came one time and the remaining word came zero time. So this is the bag of words uh, presentation model for this particular text. All right. Now there are certain limitations of bag of word model that I want to discuss quickly. You already noticed that your vocabulary could be long. Let's say I have a hundred thousand words. You know, I have those many emails. Then each vector for each email would be of size 100K. This is still better than one hot encoding because in one hot encoding, one word itself would be 100K. Here, the entire email would be 100K. Okay, so it is the size is less than one hot encoding, but still it is it is a sparse presentation basically sparse presentation is basically you have a big vector where most of the values are zero that's called sparse presentation and this consumes a lot of memory and computer resources so, so that's disadvantage number one the other one is it doesn't capture the meaning of your sentence accurately you can have two emails i need help i need assistance help and assistance are kind of same so the, i expect that the numeric representation of both of these emails is similar but no, here we are just having one word as unique word and we are just doing a count, you know, word count. Therefore, the numeric representation of both of these emails is different. See here we have one, one, one here, here you have zero and one here. So they are different. So it doesn't capture the meaning of words properly, but that's okay. In today's coding, we will see, we'll be able to um, get pretty good accuracy with the bag of word model. And without further ado, let's start writing the code. And by the way, this is me uh, in the picture here. So we're going to write the code. And before we write the code, there are some prerequisites which I have mentioned before as well that you need to know Python, first of all. You need to know code, the pandas. If you go to YouTube, Code Basics Pandas, I have tutorials. You follow first seven or eight tutorials in pandas, it's good enough. And I have machine learning tutorial playlist again here you can follow maybe first 14 or 15 videos and you will have some good understanding of how to use scikit-learn, train test play, things like that. And we are going to use all of those concepts in the coding part today. So we are going to do some coding and in the end we will have an exercise for you as well. I have this data set of spam and non-spam email more than 5000 email which I have are loaded in my pandas data frame and the first thing i will do is i just try to figure out how many spam and non-spam emails are there and in pandas data frame on a series which is a column in a data frame there is a method called value counts and when you use that method it tells me that there are 4000 regular email which are not spam and more than 700 spam email so it looks like an imbalanced data set, uh, but we'll still try to explore uh, building a machine learning model without handling the imbalance in the data set and we'll see how it goes. So since the spam and ham is a text, first I will create a new column where for spam, I will have the value of that, that column as one and for other emails, it will be zero. Okay, so I want to create that numeric column that can represent spam and ham. And the way you can do that 
in pandas you probably all know that you can you can create a new column by doing this and you can say df dot category dot apply so what this will do is on a category column it will apply some transformation and it will generate a new column now obviously you can write category column this way as well i'll just be consistent here and here you need to supply your transformation function now if all of this is japanese to you again i recommend you watch my pandas videos and you will have some understanding here i'm going to write my transformation function which can convert the text into numbers okay zero or one and we can use python lambda so lambda is simple lambda x means for each of these values in this column do this what do you want to do you want to say the value of this numerical numeric spam column is one if x is equal to spam else zero okay you can write a python function as well you can say get spam number and you can supply x you can say if x is equal to spam you can return one otherwise you can return zero you can do that this and instead of lambda you can have this method here as well but these two are same essentially you know this lambda is just a short way of writing this same python function and when you hit control enter by the way, you can hit control enter to execute that shell. If you hit shift enter, it will execute that shell and create a new cell for you. Now see, spam column is created. You know, whenever the value is ham, it's zero. Spam, it is one. All right, that, loud. that sounds good. I'm going to now import train test split method from Escalon, this is something we have used a lot during my machine learning videos. So go watch it out if you don't have an idea. And we will be creating training and test data set. So we have independent variable which will be stored in X. Y is the dependent way. X is a, a dependent variable, Y is an independent variable. Basically, X train is nothing but the message itself. Okay, and Y train, Y basically, X is a message, Y is spam, right? We are determining whether message is spam or not based on the message body. So message body is your X, spam or non, no spam is Y, okay? And we always split your data set into training and test so that when you're doing prediction, when you are evaluating the performance of the model, you can use the unbiased sample. You will use X test and Y test so that the model is not biased. We have covered all this theory in our machine learning videos. And I'll be, I'll be using X train test split to create the split. And here you will be supplying your X first, which is DF dot message. Okay. And DF dot spam, this particular column is your Y. You can specify the split. Okay, what do you want your test size to be? I want 20% of samples to go in my test and 80% will remain in my training data set. So now you can, you know, see here the total number of samples that we had uh, was, let me show you df.shape. We had a total of 5,572 emails. Out of that, because of the split, I got 4457 in my training data set and my taste is having 1115. All right, this sounds so good now. What I will do is I will try to explore extreme. So first of all, when you do train test split, See, you can use this Python type function to see what is the data type of X train variable. X train is actually a series. It is a Panda series. Okay. 
And if you explore this thing further, let's say I want to see first four samples. See, it looks something like this. Okay. And if you want to see the first email, you can just do this. This is your first email. Uh, okay, that is not working. Because that is not working. I know why it is not working. Because <clears throat> the first email, the index is 1579. See? I mean, this, this looks like a spam to me. But anyways, you understood the data type of X train here. Now, let's see the Y train. So when you do type of Y train, say it's series. And I will, oh sorry, the first four samples I will display here. N0 looks like this is not a spam. Anyways, okay. And the reason we have capital X and small y is because capital X, you can have multiple dependent variables. So this could be your table with multiple columns. And usually y train is just one column. You know, so x train is multiple columns, y is one. Therefore, we use capital X and small y here. That's just a convention that everyone follows. Okay. All right. Now comes the interesting part. From sklearn, we are going to import something called count vectorizer. This will help us build bag of words model for our numeric representation. And the way you import that from sklearn is by using this line. Okay. You can look into documentation. Just Google sklearn count vectorizer and you will find the documentation here. It converts a collection of text documents to a matrix of token counts. They have given some simple examples here which you can look into. But you already got an idea that it's it's doing basically what we saw in the presentation, right? So in this presentation, see, it will create a vocabulary and for each of these emails, it will have a word frequency or a word count uh, at a given position. Okay, so by doing count vectorizer, we are generating this metric. And each each of this vector is one email. Okay. So when you consider all the emails, you get this big matrix. Okay. So we will create the count vectorizer is a class, and in the Python, I will create uh, an instance of that class, and I will say now. We this vectorizer has a method called transform, and this transform, when you supply your X train, it will now generate the bag of word model for the X train. So X train is basically four, four, five, seven emails, different emails, spam and non-spam mix, and I'm for each of these emails, I'm generating the the bag of word model and you have to use values because that's what you know this expects so when you do values it will convert it to numpy array i think right so let me just show you and if you do type the numpy and dear and that's what fit uh, underscore transform expects as a as an argument so that that's the reason why i'm doing this and you will get, I will call it count vectorizer, so CV, okay? And let's see. So once you do that, okay, I got this. It's a sparse matrix of type numpy dot in 64. If you want to view this, what you can do is you can convert this to an array. Okay, it's a sparse matrix. You're converting it to numpy array. So when you do that, it's multi-dimensional, two-dimensional numpy array. And if you see, look at first two samples, you know, they look like this. Now, obviously this, it's, it's a big array, basically. It's a sparse metric. So, so the first sample looks like this. You're seeing zero, you, the real values are hidden somewhere here. 
Uh, but I want to see the shape of this first. So see, I have 7,675 words, unique words in my vocabulary. And if you want to know your entire vocabulary, you can use this, this variable V. See, V was found vectorizer. And if you do V dot get feature names out, this will give you your entire vocabulary. This has all the words, okay? So let me show you some words from this is 10 to 30. See, these are all the words which are present. Uh, let's look at 1000 to 1050. See, this, these are all the words that my vocabulary has. And if you want to, um, let's say, do the length, okay? So, okay, you can do shape and you know, 7,675, that's my vocabulary, folks. Now, if you want to know all the methods, like you'll ask me, okay, how do you know about this method? Well, just do DIRV and it will, DIR is a generic method in Python that can tell you all the methods which are supported on that variable. And I saw this method, I did Google and I found, you know, Google is your friend, folks. It will tell you the purpose of that method. You can also do V dot vocabulary. See, you might have noticed if you're smart, you might have noticed V dot vocabulary underscore, right? That will give you V vocabulary it gives you the vocabulary so the word how is at position 3541 so 3541 position where okay let me just remove this here in this vocabulary you see this was your entire vocabulary in that if you do 3541 position you get how if you do 6847 you get what? Two. See? You just play with it and you'll get an idea. You can also go to cell and you can just clear the output because it's just occupying a lot of vertical space here. All right. So I have four, four, five, seven emails. Each email now is a vector of size 7675. Okay. So let me look at my first email now. And what I'll do is, see, when I look at my first email, okay, this is my first, actually, this is not my first email, I need to, you know what, I'll convert this into a numpy array, because this matrix is not good for me, so I'll just do this, convert to array, and x chain, MP. See, this is my numpy array and the first four emails are like this. Now I'm, too, I'm just curious, you know, what is, because I'm seeing just zero and I, I'm curious uh, what is the vector representation of this email. So one thing I'm going to do is since majority of these values are zero, I want to know where is non-zero value and you can do that by See, so yeah, let me look at first email. Okay, so this is my first email. I want to know the index where there is no zero value and you can do it using np.where function where you can say that, okay, x train np zero not equal to zero. All right. All right, so sorry, so zero, this was my first email. And in that email, I want to know what are the indexes where the value is not zero, okay? Now, see, what this means is this. Okay, let's, let's dissect this step by step. It's not as hard. Like if you pause this video thing for a moment, it's not that hard, okay? So X train, your X train, in your X train, 
the first four samples were this, okay? And the first sample is this, 157. That is the first sample. It's just the series index. So you have an email that looks like this, okay? And when you convert it, this into a vector, basically, what you got is C at 755. So now, where is my vector? So that is my vector, correct? So this is my vector. And for this vector, so at 755 position, I have a non-zero value. So I have one value, right? Then other one, this one, 916 is non-zero. I'm just trying to find a value where the, it is not one. Okay, I think trial error is gonna take long time. Anyways, I can just show you this 1483, okay? So 1483 is one. So what is 1483? 1483, if I do this here, 1483, boyfriend. And you see, there will be a reference of a boyfriend somewhere. Boyfriend, see? Boyfriend. So that therefore, boyfriend is once, okay? If you do, let's say 1771, okay, so 1771 is what? CHEF. So see CHEF. So this is how this representation is working. I hope you are getting this point. All right. Now I am all set. My training and test uh, sets are ready. I am all set to build my machine learning model. Yes, folks. Now we are going to build machine learning model. And the way you do that is I'm going to import this naive base model. So in naive base, there are two models. Okay multinomial and there is another one so we are going to use multinomial if you want to see the difference understand the difference between these two uh you can go to this website called youtube search for core basic machine learning see my wife likes to see cid uh so core basics machine learning in that you know, we have covered naive base, these two parts. So if you watch these two videos, you will get an idea of what I'm talking about, okay? So, now, I'm going to create a model by using this multinomial class. And see, training machine, machine learning model is, is as good as calling fit. You just, calling a fit method here, you will say x train cv y train. Okay. And when you hit control enter, actually it train the model. And now I want to evaluate the performance of the model. And the way you do that is, see, we need, you need to use the vectorizer that we use. See, v is count vectorizer. That count using that count vectorizer, we need to transform x taste because x taste is simple email, right? Word email. You need to convert it into count vectorizer first. And that by doing that, you will get count vectorizer for x taste CV. Similar to how you created uh, x train CV, I'm creating x taste CV. Correct. And then you can, for evaluating the performance of the model, you can import classification report from sklearn and you can say, okay, now model do predict. So my model is trained at this line and I, now it is ready to do a prediction. And the prediction it wants to do is on X taste CV. And whatever result you will get, we'll call it Y prediction. And the way classification report works is you first give the truth, which is your Y taste, and then you give your prediction. Okay. And when you do that, that was a typo. You get this. And if you want to do pretty printing, if you use print method, you get a nice layout. Now, folks, look at the accuracy. See, precision, recall, 
for both the classes, spam and non-spam, right? This is spam, this is ham. For both the classes, the accuracy, the precision and recall, they're pretty high. F1 score is high. I used F1 score and all that because the class was imbalanced. Remember, our spam emails were very less compared to our regular ham emails. And therefore, I wanted to use classification report and not just the accuracy. Okay, whenever you have imbalanced data set, you need to use classification you to, uh, report. You need to look at F1 score, recall precision for all the classes. All right, and I can do some testing on the sample email. Clearly, the first one is not spam. The second one is spam, see? 20% discount, exclusive offer just for you. Okay, who gives an exclusive offer to you? See, in this world, you don't get anything for free. So whenever you get any email or any scheme, this is a general life philosophy. When, when, where they say free or huge discount, it means it is a spam. And when you do transformation, see the first one is not a spam. The second one is a spam. All right. Now see, you did all this work. Okay. Creating count vectorizer, train displayed, all of that. Will you cry or laugh if I tell you there is an easier way of doing this using SQLearn pipeline? See, I will do the same thing now using SQLearn pipeline very easily. So the way you create your SQLearn pipeline is by supplying count vectorizer and multinomial V and B, right? Naive base. So if you've seen my machine learning model, you'll know. So pipeline is nothing but basically whatever steps you were doing manually here, you are this is a convenient api that you can use okay and once this pipeline is created you can just do clf.fit x train and y train see here i am not saying x train cv because the count vector azure will be taken care of by the pipeline see it is the first step in the car in the pipeline so now the api looks much simple you created a pipeline now you're saying clf.fit okay and then you can directly print the classification report so i can have my classification report where i will say y test and clf.predict and i do clf.predict and supply x test i get that y predicted right so instead of saving in a variable i can save it in a variable too here i can say y thread okay this is your y prediction and you print your all right so you see accuracy and the precision recall everything is pretty good that's all i have for this tutorial for exercises i did not have a time to build one but if you want to contribute and if you want to prepare an exercise for this uh, particular tutorial, please give me a pull request on GitHub page. Many times when I find time later on, either I or some of the volunteers will prepare exercises for my videos. And it's always advisable that you check video description because you know, you will see, you will see an, uh, exercises coming up after a few days of posting this video. So do check out the video description for exercises. I wish you all the best. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends.